Hello everyone and welcome to the latest edition of Racing Weekly, a YouTube and podcast show brought to you by Odds Checker in association with Bet365. As always on the left wing, uh, Sam Turner, but today we've got a very special guest who's playing up front. It is one of the most recognisable faces, certainly one of the most recognisable voices in the sport of horse racing. It's Richard Hoyles. Hoyles, it's great to have you Thank on you the show today. Thank you very kind. No, um, before we get into all the chat about King George meeting and Goodwood coming up, etc., just a, a little bit about yourself, because in terms of uh, uh, a CV and a profile for, for a commentator in the sport of horse racing, very few people will have what you've got now at this stage of your career, and you're still relatively young. Oh, no, that's <laughs> just because <laughs> I've been around for so relatively, yeah. relatively to me, you are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'm always with the older horses these days against the younger ones, that's, that's for sure. I'm, I think I've just been very, very lucky, really. Just don't say no to stuff, and if you're not very good, they won't ask you again. And if you busk it through to the next stage, then people look at you and think, we did that, so you must be able to do this, even if you can't. So mm. I've been very, very fortunate. That's our premise on the podcast, <laughs> <basically>. <laughs> So we're hanging in there. Um, but you spent, you know, you spent quite a bit of time in Hong Kong. That must have been a lot of fun. Yeah, I think that was probably the best move I made in that sort of sense, because I didn't come from a horse racing background at all. I'd never even wanted to be a commentator. Yeah, account, a qualified accountant. And I applied for the job at the paper to commentate. I'd never even <laughs> grown up wanting to be one. I just found I could <laughs> sort of do it passably. And then after doing a few years in the UK, um, through Jim McGrath, I got the chance to go mm. to Hong Kong. And I don't think... My old strategic planning hat, that's what I did in accounting, said that this was a chance to work overseas and yeah. do something different to what most other commentators were doing at the time in this country. And as you know, you've done lots of overseas work. Yeah. Once you're on that sort of bandwagon, and Hong Kong is a very good product to look at when you come in, it impresses people, particularly like Happy Valley. Um, and then you get left lots of cards and, you know, if you're lucky enough to go and work in Dubai and other places and yeah. call it called the Japan Cup purely by chance in my first year in Hong Kong. And yes, you've just been very fortunate, I think. I've done quite a lot of foreign work. I covered Chepstow once for the old At The Races. <laughs> That's about as far as it went with me. Well, one thing I, I wanted to ask you about, obviously you're the, the, the main commentator for ITV, terrestrial television, but you also do race course commentaries as yeah. well. Um, do you have to cater for two different audiences? Is that something that you do consciously? When you're, I mean, I, I know we, we kind of assume that that's what you do, but yeah, is you, that what you do? Yes, you, you, you do. It took me a while to, because originally I used to, you know, I was um, second to Simon at Channel 4 for quite a few years, and I used to find that transition quite hard because I wasn't doing it as often. Now it's a little bit easier to do so. But yes, you, you try and watch your language, you try and paint the story more so people can understand what's going on when you're commentating at Chepstow on a Monday. You presume mm. that most people who are watching who are there mm. are relatively au fait with what's going on and you can yeah. use terminology. You, you just try to play straight back, to be honest. Yeah. But for ITV, there's a little bit more compunction to try and explain that from the start, for example, on Saturday, mm. you're running downhill at Ascot mm. and a few horses might be keen. And that mm. puts people who might not know what to look at in the early stages of a race, something that they can latch onto and begin to understand. And also, as you've seen from that, he's also a pretty smart cricketer. Good with the gloves behind the stumps oh, as well. Once upon a time, but you know, my son plays at the moment, and I appreciate that I was quite useful as a by stopper. That's all I really was as a wiki keeper. But now, when you watch your son's play, you go, oh, how many? <laughs> anything in the way. Yeah, yeah. Anything in the way. Yeah. Because that, that's the key to winning games of cricket as youth, is not to have 25 buys every innings. Yeah. Good to our age. It is, our age, yeah. it is, yeah. Well, well, we're going to put your analytical skills to, to the test because what we are moving into. Uh, here on Racing Weekly is our Racing Recap. And we start this week's Racing Recap with the big race from last weekend, the King George. Now, <clears throat> before the race, it was billed, Richard and Sam, as a, a, an excellent renewal of the contest. <laughs> um, subsequent to pile driver's success in the race, one or two people have already poured cold water. Actually, some people actually poured scorn on the result. If you, mm. if you look at one or two... Uh, articles or responses to the success of Pile Driver. What was your response to it? Um, I think if you're, let's be dispassionate about how you rate it, and I think there are easy ways of putting a relatively low number on it in the sense that many horses just didn't give their running. It wasn't a question that Pile Driver beat everyone that, that mm, turned mm. up. I think the unusual aspect of it, Sam, to be honest, was how many horses were beaten after yeah. half a mile. Yeah. Uh, I don't really remember that. If you'd stopped that after mm. four furlongs, leading chances of at least three horses were severely compromised or maybe already fatally compromised. Yeah, it was a bizarre race in a lot of respects, wasn't it? I mean, I thought it was a great result, but not necessarily yeah, a great race. You know, I was absolutely chuffed to bits for William, you know, having stood with him, fortunate to stand by him in Dubai when 
Pile driver was a bit unfortunate in the Shima Classic, um, and that, that you know that was a big prize that just mm. evaded his grasp really by a length. That was all. Yeah. And if he'd had the brakes, um, but he's compiling an unbelievable CV, really, the horse. And uh, I do get what connections say when they, they don't feel as though he's getting quite the merit that he deserves for his performances. You know, you win a coronation, you're third in a ledger, you win a King George, etc., etc., etc. And I think some of that comes from the fact that that it's William Muir and you know Martin Dwyer, and they're not high profile people in our sport, are they? They are for people who follow the sport closely, but mm. for the Saturday crowd, they're not Frankie Dutori, they're not Charlie Appleby, et cetera, et cetera. So I, 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 I get that the horse probably wouldn't be top of most people's lists as the most likeable horse in training, you know, older flat horse, but he's certainly working his way up mine. You know, he, he's achieving, isn't he? And he's contributing and he, he turns up for these tough gigs and he's well trained, you know, by the team yeah. at, at William Muir's. And I thought it was a, I thought it was a great result. But, yeah, not necessarily a great race. I think the point about all Group 1 horses, they're all good. And if the circumstances stack up, mm. they are then all capable of taking advantage. Mm. Not like your maiden in the middle of the week, where it doesn't matter how advantageous it is for some horses, mm. they just won't win because they're not good enough. But I do think PJ McDonald could hardly have believed the way this was set up. was amazing, wasn't it? Because Westover was too keen right from the word go. Mm. You know, I mean, he yeah. lost his chance. And then just as he looked to be getting some sort of breather, Ryan attacked on Broom, mm. Emily Upjohn had been keen from the word go, um, and Mishriff had given them four lengths at the start. Yeah. So, if you yeah. like, all our calculations, if you repriced yes. it at halfway, mm. it would have been very interesting. Mm. I'm, I'm, also, along the pile driver lines, I, I was also happy that Tokanda Tassa got yeah. Yeah. a little bit more recognition. Yeah, definitely. Because, you know, he ran really well, and a bit like pile driver, everyone looked at his arc and thought, oh, 80 to 1. But he beat yes. some good horses that day. Mm. And given the ground wasn't in his favour, but there's no doubt those two were really the only two that gave their running on the day. But um, you're, you're damned by your starting price a lot of the time in these races, aren't you? If you're a big price, everyone yeah. just sees it as a fluke. Absolutely. And there's this, yeah. there's this general thing within the sport, within a lot of sports, I think, that if the result isn't what the betting suggested before mm. the start of the competition and the event, mm. there's, a, there's a reluctance to accept it for what it is mm. as opposed to what it should have been. Yeah, um, I think there's something in that. It's the same with the Open, isn't it? If you get like somebody at 66 or 80 yeah. American that isn't probably, you know, yeah. Zach, Johns Curtis. Zach Johnson yeah. or whoever it might yeah. be, yeah, um, and they win it, everyone's just a bit, mm, a bit underwhelmed yeah. by the performance Unless and the result. Unless they're winning the, the yeah, Premier, Premier League. League. Yeah. But for exactly. those that are involved, the Leicester fans <laughs> and Absolutely. the Power Driver fans yeah. and Martin Dwyer's, it will remain put, their put single biggest racist racing day. Yeah, probably. I mean, put a bit of context on the figures with Power Driver. He's raced nine times over a mile and a half. He was unplaced in the derby when he got hampered. Yeah. He was fourth, beaten a length in the Shima Classic. Other than that, he's finished first or second on the other seven starts. 1.8 million in prize money. Not bad for a 10k purchase. Yeah, and that's the point. They've held on to him, which is a great yeah. part of that story, because I'm sure there have been offers along the way. Of course. Rumoured as recently as the beginning of this year for Australia. Yeah. And like Richard, he's been around the world as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, well didn't earn 1.8 million, though. <laughs> Well, it was a big mile and a half race at the end of the season, uh, first Sunday in October at Longchamp. Uh, Pile Drivers 14 to 1, Bet365. Uh, Torquato Tasso is 10 to 1, uh, with expected cut in the ground as we get there. Torquato Tasso, the bet for you from, from the King George? Go on. You. Well, I was going to say, from the King George, yes, because I don't think Mr. Riff will go. Yeah. The mile and a half stretches him at that yeah. pace. Um, Pile Driver, I think, I don't think it'll stack up anything like as well, particularly if the ground was not against him, but more into Quattro Tasso's favour. So of those that ran on Saturday in the King George, and you said you got a bat one for the arc, it would be the German horse. Yeah, so William Mule's already looking out for I you. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's such a shame. William, really, I think it's a certainty. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the soft ground and the fact that he's been there and done it before, Quattro Tasso, and I think his curve is going upwards again, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And he, he finished the race off really well, I thought, Saturday, and, and looked in, in good heart on ground that was much too quick. Yeah, he always looked at it. it was all a stride, half a stride too quick yeah. from all the way around. Um, very, very briefly, uh, I hope that Martin Dwyer will be back in the saddle yeah. for the arc, but if he isn't, then PJ McDonald has clearly proven that he can handle the big occasion. And what a day it was for him mm. uh, on Saturday, Richard. Uh, his, his response after he won the race was first class. Yeah, so far I've been really, the accountant in me has done all the analysis, but <laughs> the, the joyous nature of the victory irrespective of what you think of the worth of the form, yeah. it's fantastic. It, you didn't, almost didn't know where to start because you've got mm. William Muir and Chris Grassic, you've got mm. connections that the horse 
wasn't sold or you know, 10,000 pounds or guineas. And then you've got PJ McDonald as well. That, it was an absolute fairy tale story. Bumps into him in the car park on the way out. Yeah. And you could say, big grin, what yeah. wouldn't you say? It's yeah. like, yeah. he will remember that day. That's the crowning glory for him. I know Lawrence gave him plenty of memorable days, but this was, this was so, a King George. As he, was, as he was walking back on Pile Driver, coming back to the, to the pull-up area, uh, he was, uh, <coughs> the groom came and met him. Mm. Uh, and he was, I could only hear a, a brief comment. You could just pick it up. But PJ was going, I don't uh, so and so believe it. I've just yeah. been the King George. Yeah. And he was saying it to himself, really, not to anybody else. But he could just pick it up. Uh, it was just a, a truly magical moment. I thought, I thought the great quote afterwards from Willie Muir was that Martin Dwyer had said to him, get PJ McDonald, he will be a great member of the team. Yeah. Team being, you know, mm -hmm. he will listen, he will ride how we think we want him ridden. Um, and I thought that was an yeah. interesting pointer. And I'd love, again, if we could just be in the mind of a jockey during the race. He must not have been able to believe. Not only was he mm. going to win a King George, but he knew he was going to win a King George from two furlongs yeah, out, yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, Turned halted up. Well, everything behind Glance at the big screen, three yeah. lengths. Just like, you just must think in a minute you'll wake up. Yeah, he was running around a little bit. So I'm going to be less uh, <laughs> critical of Martin Dwyer's leisure ride when I next see him. <laughs> 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 uh, very briefly, spin through a couple of the other races on the card, the Moet and Shandon International. Oh, must uh, we? Fresh, well, so. oh, <laughs> fresh uh, deserved success and fairness for the, for the winner. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on, Come on. I tipped him in the Woking and left him alone oh. Saturday and tipped bless him. So that was another nail of oh. chink, chink. <laughs> but it, yeah, it was... Um, Another example and showcased again Danny Tudhope's yeah. class, not only at Ascot, but everywhere, but especially at Ascot, he's the new Jamie Spencer, isn't he? So he's uh, six from 25 this year at Ascot. Yeah. He should have just ridden about 1.5 on SPs. Five to two, eight to one, seven to one, forty to one, twenty to one, sixteen yeah. to well, one. we've just blown the SPs now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's astonishing, isn't it? I don't yeah. know. I don't, maybe it's something we don't make enough of. If you're a football team going to place, you always lose and you always have a hard time. Maybe jockeys jump in the car to some places, feeling as fresh as paint, and others where you know, you know, you know, you've had not had the rub of the mm. green. You don't. I've got in my head he's pretty good at Goodwood as well. Okay, I'll have a look at that as well. He's, I think um, so. There was a horse out there I wanted to mention as well, documenting who finished yes. fifth. Yes. Because I thought he rather let them get away from him, and I thought, well, that's a bit odd. I, I think I would have chased that a bit earlier. Um, what is it? There's a race coming up, which he's, he's off a higher mark from, that he's won and finished second in early uh, September. Where's that? At Ascot. At Ascot. Yeah, so yeah, I actually so. back documenting at Royal Ascot, where he got close, and he was, he was much closer to the pace. Jack... Mitchell rode him that day. A big price, wasn't it? He? he was a massive price, and I, I thought he ran a great race, but mm. he got there, and then he just emptied out in the last half a furlong, and I thought the way they rode him was to compensate for that and to avoid that and to finish the race off and hopefully nick a place mm. or do better. So I thought that's why he was ridden. Yes, it may well be. I, it's not all I yeah. pretend to know much about. It was just when I was looking at the form lines yeah, and seeing right. that... It, He's below a winning mark in the past. Have a look at Kevin Frost's form as well the last month. Yeah. yeah. Another three winners in the last week, I think. Well, just, Including he, one he yesterday at Ponte. He doesn't deserve to be the prices that he's going off at no. in these races because he's, he's not far away from hitting the tins on uh, big prices in these really good handicaps. Yeah. And because he's, I think he's a nine year old now, is he? He was oh, the oldest right? horse in the race, wasn't yeah. he? He beat, and obviously Blessing was the second oldest horse, yeah. I think, along with Accidental Agent. That's I think. right. So, uh, uh, yeah, good one. I like it. Mm. Um, the Valiant Stakes, Richard, Jungley. Uh, winning the race that her dam won yeah, that was nice. back in the day, Thistlebird. Yeah, it was a nice story. Uh, she's not very big, Jumbly, is she? And I wasn't right. sure she'd train on, but right. actually, good heart. Oscular in second, fantastic. Another example of George Bowie. Yes. But she is sort of pinned at listed and Group mm. 3 level, I mm. think. So I'm not 100% sure. She might sure run that... again this week, might she? I think she's well, in a race this week. Every dance, isn't it, really? And yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm pleased for Jumbly that they've got... The, the bigger win. Yeah. Um, whether whether great ride as well, wasn't it? Brilliant race riding. Oh. Kept Jim Crowley penned Zambach, in on Zambach. Yeah. Um, Holly Doyle, great example of her. Uh, Holly again. Doyle, seven hundred UK winners. Seven hundred UK winners. I think she'd gone. Sure, she'd had Nashua and probably a few others in, yeah. in France and around the world mm. prior to that. But yep, seven hundred UK winners, which I, you know, keeps setting the the bar higher, and the way we're going, step. she will reach a 1,000, which would be... Got there quickly as well, not she? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. These days, I mean, it's 120, 130 per season, so yeah. those numbers are racking up pretty fast. Uh, the Princess Margaret stakes a horse that's yeah. fast becoming one of Frank and Notorious' favourites. <laughs> <laughs> the zoo. Yeah, why not? Uh, uh, she, I sure, thought, showed a great attitude. She was in front a long way from home, yes. as, as Halsey called it, called it on, on Saturday. Mm. 
um, but showed a, a wonderful attitude again. She's, yeah. she's also only little. Proof she's not a one-trick pony, done it away from the July course. I thought there was a lot of merit in the second and third as well. I like Kinta as a, as a model. Um, and I thought I thought the third Briege, um, you know... Seventh third on for her? Most definitely, yeah. yeah. I so as Related well. to the WOW signal, I think. And that's yeah. probably why she's ended up at... Uh, uh, current connections. I think Lazoo will be kept busy. I think, yes. you know, mm. looks a two year old. And yeah. from what Rafe said afterwards, a sprinting two year old. So probably yeah. allow the Chibley Park keep going. Mm. And the other point is in those races, I think we had five unbeaten horses. It was only really Kinter, wasn't it, that, yes. that showed up to it. And that's the time of year you get these really impressive winners of maidens. I think she's quite a little, a little. <laughs> yeah. I think she's quite highly regarded, Kinter, as well. Yeah. Word reached me. So okay, neither of you have any interest in the 20 to 1. Uh, with Beth365 for the Guineas next year. For uh, this if year. I wanted to back her for a race next year, it would be the Commonwealth Cup, but I don't think I'd, yeah. I'd, I don't think she will, I think others would have passed her by then. I think she's she the first one at Abzu Star as well. Yeah. Uh, as in the first one to be side by. He was leading Southern Hemisphere yes. side. He's had a 1 2 3 down there in a Group 1. This is his first Northern Hemisphere crop. I always think when you're the first of anyone, Mm. The pressure is to get on with mm. it because you can then be the first son or daughter yeah. to retire to start and make a nice little, you know. Yes. So I think they'll get on with her as a two-year-old. Yeah, accountant coming to the oh, yeah, Absolutely. Of course. Six All about figures. Money. Cash in. <laughs> 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 I'd have sold power driver for 20 grand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the York Stakes um, yeah. on, on Saturday. Uh, Dubai Honour, William Haggis was keen to get him back on the track. I thought you ran a fine race, but... Yeah. Um, Fabulous moment for Sam uh, Hoskins, deserving success. Yeah, brilliantly run that syndicate by Sam Hoskins as well. Um, I mean, he has danced every dance, hasn't he? He's been in all sorts of, you know, with all sorts of horses over a mile at Ascot. And now he's sort of stretched out to that mile a quarter. Saw it out really as well. I thought Dubai Honour would, would probably just nut him close yeah. home. But he's two from two with Ben Curtis on. I think he's won by a head and a short head. So he doesn't do things easily, good old Sabuska. But, yeah. you know, great to see him win. Uh, Dubai Honour, though, you'd imagine, Richard, with mm. a bit of cut in the ground later on in the season, we'll have some big targets. I mean, are we being ignorant of Sabuska? Um, he will obviously go for some decent races. They haven't been shy of having a, a dip. Well, he's going to Judmont. Yeah, he's going for the yeah. Judmont. He's 40 to 1 with Bet365. Um, but Dubai Honour would be the one that you'd take out for bigger targets later in the season? He'd be the more likely one, wouldn't he? Because um, great result again for Sabuska, but you just feel that possibly was when the cards fell his way, because Dubai Honor really came to win the race, just yeah. thought he was a little bit rusty. He improved so quickly at the end of last season, yeah. didn't he? That was the point. Yeah. That's, that's where you're not, we're not quite it, sure. He, he won his side in the Britannia, didn't he? Then he went to the July course for that handicap and won that comfortably over a mile and a quarter, and then just took off, didn't he? Absolutely. The win in France was he yeah. he'd absolutely decimated a field <laughs> where he'd looked to be no more than an average chance. And that's the worry, is when you had to trajectory that steep as to whether you can ever get back on that... Yeah bandwagon or not because if you'd just seen the race on Saturday you wouldn't have put him as a, no. an obvious group one no. contender uh, also uh, to uh -huh. York on Saturday Gail Force my favourite my favourite mare in training Gail I think. Force, she is tremendously <laughs> when she's on the bunny I mean that head carriage I mean I saw her first yeah. time up at Newmarket on the rally course and she wasn't fit apparently but she just kept digging in and digging in and got, got over the line and it was a bit the same at York 1-3 you know, one, 1-3 three, one, three, or 3-1-3-1 three, one, three, one she is now at York yeah. Um, she's off the suits her. Really suits just her gets right rolling, yeah. doesn't she? Connor Beasley, I think, has won three of the last four renewals of that race as well. Now. She's astonishing, actually. She's one of those completely unsung horses. I think I'm right in saying she's won her last four handicaps with really? listed races dotted in between, yeah. which she's run creditably. Mm. You know, we always feel at this stage of the season you need an unexposed one to win a handicap of, mm. of that type. You're looking down the weights for the improver, and there, right in front of you, yeah. is a horse who will give her running every Usually single off, time. Bang off top weight. If conditions present itself, like you said earlier on with the Group 1 horses, she takes advantage. She's off to Ponty, I think. Yeah, she's there's a listed race uh, in the middle of August, the Flying Philly Stakes. There. Four runs there, first, second, yeah. second, first. She's she won yeah. the handicap there for sure, yeah. Yeah, she's a tremendous, tremendous... You mentioned Connor Beasley, I just wanted to, to bring him up because I think he's one rider over the last two or three years who's made significant improvements to his riding, mm. uh, to the way he conducts himself. He spent a lot of time riding out in Dubai, uh, attached to Ahmad bin Hamash's stable, and he's, he's ridden for a few others out there as well. But it, it seems that being a, a stable jockey out in Dubai and being one of the big players during the non-carnival part of the season really lifted his confidence. Mm. And okay. then into the carnival, uh, he was riding good horses or decent enough horses in big races. And the last couple of years, it really seemed as if his the, the confidence he carries himself is, is a lot different. And he's yeah. made huge strides. And I think it's worth noting that he is now... Heading, you know, getting close to I think being one of the one of the top jockeys around. I mean, yeah. Mind being 
Well, I, I think I've read a quote somewhere that being interviewed by you and Tom Stanley <laughs> really, really helped his confidence all the way through the winter. Do you think that's um, right? Yeah. yeah. Because so, he, he could see that anything was holiday, possible. Was no, he could you see. Week and you started chatting to him down by the beach. Was it? <laughs> well, he would be able to see that anything was possible if I got a career <laughs> in the game. But he's, um, yeah, I, I think he's a terrific, terrific rider. He gets pigeonholed a little bit as a as a sprint jockey, but that's because I think Michael Dodds, who is a, yes. another yeah. excellent trainer, gets everything out of his horses. Um, yeah. Just trains a lot of that type. So. Good association, Dakota, Dakota Gold, and you know one or two like that. He's done yeah. really well with well, in recent seasons. We're often guilty, aren't we, of you know north-south divide. The hard part for a lot of northern riders is getting on the quality of horses that you have based yeah. in Newmarket. But if you just look back at the weekend, who have we already spoken about? Danny Tanto, PJ McDonald, <laughs> Connor Beasley. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't stop there either. Ben Curtis as no. well. So as a result, you know, there's probably not much between those riders. It is just your chance of getting. A couple of weeks ago, Kevin Start on John Smith Cup. That's right. Yeah. Of course, um, Kieran Fallon came out of nowhere, didn't he? Uh, <laughs> he came right yeah. into the north, came down. Well, yeah, go to see the Ramsdens. Yeah. The north is an excellent breeding ground for top riders. Uh, anyway, that is a look back at the best of the racing from the week, and I'm going to ask you both for one horse from last week that you will back wherever it runs next time. Sam, have you got something in mind? I, I quite like the run of in that, that Gale Force Mayor race of Silver Samurai, who was just taking off his legs early doors and then stayed on quite nicely. He's a bit of a late headway monkey, but I think when he gets away from York, which is a speed-favouring track, gets back to Haydock or Newbury, where you can ride a bit more of a race, I think, I, I think he's... I don't think he's quite finished yet. Silver Samurai. Yeah, I was tempted by a couple of the newcomers. We saw High Bank and Nostrum, yes. both yeah. Kingdom oh, two year olds yeah. who were very impressive. But mindful of what I just said about the number of those horses that just go <laughs> pop when they go up in class, I'll probably stick to the one we mentioned. I'll probably stick to documenting, hoping that that race at Ascot in early September is where the horse goes. Okay. Uh, Nostrum, who you mentioned, mm. I love that horse. Yeah, you have fallen in love with him. It was a very right unsum there. Michael Stout two year old ride, wasn't it? Oh, As in, he was Ryan straight Moore, on the. Yeah. Well, for a know. start, Ryan Moore went to Sandown. Mm. On his way to, to Ireland, he went to Sandown to ride. He rode two horses. He rode that horse and one for Richard Hannon. But clearly, it was Nostrum he went to ride, and uh, all seemed all seemed set up for a big run of the way. As you say, he rode him prominently from the gates early on. Not sure he'll get sold for a million to Hong Kong. I doubt this one will, will go the thesis route. No. Um, I would imagine that. I was quite smart about that because obviously, having the Hong Kong experience, I promise you that Britannia is nothing new. Yeah. That, is, that is known as the race for the Hong Kong mm. horses because don't forget all the classics in Hong Kong are for four-year-olds. Yes. So yes. it was just known. And the point about Hong Kong is you've always paid a lot because even though they're not quite as prized as they were, in order to own a horse, you have to have a permit. Yeah. It's a finite number. Yeah. And everybody knows that Britannia is the race to buy out of. Yeah. And, I mean, Alan King sold a very good horse out. It wasn't the Britannia, it was the Wolfton. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the ones that win at Royal Ascot have yeah. that cachet for an owner yeah. in Hong Kong that um, they talk numbers that... Forget whether I'm the accountant, Rishi, even you would be turning those down. Sure. <laughs> even me, he says, the man who's been around the world earning billions over the years. Uh, <laughs> Sam, Richard, thank you very much for the moment. That's the recap. And now uh, we're going to look ahead to the Qatar Goodwood Festival. Now, before we get into our preview, our friends at Bet365 have an offer for the Racing Weekly audience. If you back a winner at four to one or more on a live ITV race, place a bet on the next live ITV race and get your money back if it loses. New and eligible customers only, up to 50 pounds. Terms and conditions apply. The first race we'll look at at the Qatar Goodwood Festival on Tuesday is the Goodwood Cup. And of course, Stradivarius might well be his last race and he won't have the assistance of Frankie Dettori in the saddle. Andrea Azzini, who has, of course, ridden him to success in the Goodwood Cup before, is back in the saddle. Um, Kiprios, who defeated him, is obviously in opposition and provides a very big hurdle for Stradivarius to potentially go out on a winning note. Richard, how do we see this race, and what is your own opinion on the whole Frankie Dettori not being there for what is potentially his last run? Um, the race as a whole, I think my the whole shape of it when we're going to discuss is going to be true Shan related, yeah. isn't it, really, in the sense of whether or not the ground will be good enough. And I know the stable have been assured that they will start on good ground on day one and attempt to get true Shan to run. We'll move that to the side in a minute. And Stradivarius, I'm not surprised. Um, I did feel of all of the things Frankie was culpable during the course of Ascot, Stradivarius was the one that... Had it been my horse, I would have been irritated. Why? Because it was a repeat of what had happened before. I think it, you, everyone appreciates people make mistakes. 
but he put himself in a position comparatively early on where he was a hostage to fortune and then almost seemed absolutely determined or paranoid in a way about getting off the rail mm -hmm. and there should have come a point with about half a mile to go when you realize you are penned in and as a result you, the only option is to stay on the fence and it, it was more the way that he kept moving out which meant it would have been very very difficult even if Stradivarius had been right at his peak for that horse to have won being given that ride and that was the thing that, that bothered me and then I think what bothered the owner was that it was then slightly well he's not quite the horse of old whereas I think if I was the owner I'd be thinking well hang on a second even if he was the horse of old he wouldn't have won from there. So with exactly that in mind I'll ask you Sam what was the bigger determining factor of that defeat was it Frankie de Torre's ride on Stradivarius or was it Frankie de Torre's assert assertion that Stradivarius didn't have quite the legs of his well, the data doesn't say that. The data doesn't suggest that. His, his closing sectionals were almost akin to Kipriosis. I mean, as Richard said, he kept switching out. Switching. He went that wide. He nearly picked up a jug of pims crossing the line, didn't he? But he's, unfortunately, if he'd stayed where Burning Victory was, as oh. Richard said, you know, off air, he got the dream run, didn't he, William Buick? And he was still there on the bridle two out. And that, that was my issue, was I just felt that there could a point when you realise it's gone pear-shaped. And now, well, plan A's gone pear-shaped, but plan B is to sit in there and it may still break up. Yeah. And had it done so, he would have mm. had a clean, uninterrupted passage. And as um, Sam said, I don't think it's the fact that Kiprios, you didn't walk away from that thinking Kiprios is the next Yates or the next, you know, he's no. a young, improving stayer who may still progress further. But it wasn't such a dominant performance in that division that you'd be thinking, well, you know, we've got a new star in the staying Ryan ranks. Moore, Ryan Moore was pretty adamant that the race didn't suit Kiprios. Well, he got a tough trip as well, didn't he, Kiprios, really? Yeah, in fairness, in fairness um, Ryan played down his, his part in that win, didn't he, quite yeah. a lot. But he did less things wrong, probably, Kiprios, than, than Stradivarius yeah, and Frankie. Worth pointing out, it wasn't a strongly run race, no, and no. hence the reason those sectionals were quite quick, and that might yeah. not have suited Kiprios. But the point is, in not a strongly run race, you need to be able to get from A to B in a straight line because you're going to dash. And if you're going at 45 degree angle, then that's really not going to help you. But Frankie's still a big, big fan of the horse, Stradivarius, yeah. and by mutual consent, he's agreed to jump off. You buy that? <laughs> what, what do you think? <laughs> when I get it's replaced in my role here, will it be by mutual consent? <laughs> well, I would certainly hope so, Sam. We all get replaced by mutual consent yeah. one day. Yeah. It, is, it is amusing, isn't it? I mean, we get it with football, obviously. It, yeah. it reminded you of a part in company football shot, didn't well, it, really? It's, it's it was a sort a... of, you know, you've just had the director's backing. Mm. You know that when you've had mm. the director's backing... Yeah, thank you for the promotion can... last season, Rishi, but unfortunately... <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. You've got us up to four viewers a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mum, my brother... <laughs> <laughs> my mum. <laughs> um, but all joking aside, we do mm. have the opportunity now to maybe see whether or not... You know, Frankie's assertion is right or wrong. He's going to find. We're well, going to find out. How would you feel if you're Andrea Rizzini? Like, would well, you pressure. do you welcome the chance, or do, are you a little bit in trepidation of? It's what, do you, pressure, hasn't it? Do you think so, or do you think you've just been handed a, a win to nothing? You He's know, got shot a free to nothing? Well, no, because you're you're replacing someone. So the, the reason why you're being replaced is because they don't believe what the jockey who rode him last time said, which is he hasn't got any. He hasn't. Got the, the legs that he wants but to do. don't you feel if you're honestly and you look at the performance of another jockey you never want to be critical of another jockey but I would look at that if I was in my old mm. days when we used to look after a jockey and we're looking at that race I say I can find you three lengths there mm. I can just look at that ride I can yeah. find you three lengths without you doing anything other than sitting well, at that horse. Well, the gold cup, well that, that's right and so I think you do go in that way I mean obviously you know it's a steadily run race and so as a result you but just looking at it, you're taking over from something that wasn't done perfectly before. Right. I think the hardest thing is when somebody leaves a football club to go to a higher football club and you're taking over something that yes. you know, has been excellent for two years. You know, um, trying to think of a lower league manager who's so got a, got a, you know, a bigger that, gig, you know, and, yeah. and, and leaves a side that they've been brilliant at. Yeah. But it means um, that, doesn't it mean that really this horse is expected to win and the only person who's going to mess it up is going to be the jockey? Well, Stradivarius wins by a couple of lengths, and then Andrea Ranzini goes in and throws Frankie under the bus and says, he was as good as ever. He was exactly. as good as when I rode him to win a couple of these races back in the day. What an extraordinary story <clears throat> that would be. Mm. He'd never do that. No. Yeah. But I sort of don't think he is as good. I genuinely don't well, think he, he is as good. He can't, it's like, can it's like, you know, so if you like, it's, it's the sort of halfway. But I do think, even though he wasn't as good, he would have seen better enough. effect yeah. in there. Whether he's good enough to win this, it's a, it's a, the staying division is, is tough, and okay. Trushan is the one who I think if you get the ground, yeah. but that ground is a big question mark. It is good ground, and Trushan runs along with Kiprios, Coltrane, who wins. 
Trisha? I think of the, the relative prices, there is some element at the moment of Trushan not running in those prices. Yes. And now we've gone to the 48-hour stage, yeah. then, you know, I, I was surprised that when I looked, and I'm not sure it's still the case, that Trushan was still third best in the market, mm -hmm. because I do think that, you know, yes. as a result, if it runs, I would have the horse's favourite. I think yeah. Trushan is the bet better stayer and has proven at Goodwood. The interesting one's Coltrane, though, isn't it? We were having a chat mm -hmm. about this. A rather typical, it comes from a completely different set of form lines, a completely yeah. different types of races, what do you make of that performance at Sandown? Can you take it on face value? Well, the, the clock told you it was blooming good performance. Mm. Uh, and the sectionals told you that as well. Rob Hornby in a group one, you know, be good, be good to see him win one, wouldn't it? Another one. Another one. Um, friend of the show, as we always say. Uh, I quite like the horse, I must admit. I think, I think as long as there's three places on offer, he'll probably be a horse that I would, I would look well, to bet each way, to be he's honest. He's 10 to 1 bet 365. I think I'm right in saying that Trushan's price is tight. Never, he's now 11-4. Right, it may well be the case. Earlier, wasn't yeah, it? I yeah, saw some 230. I suppose in a way, if you, if you, how many runners have we got at the moment? Uh, We've still got nine, nine haven't we? Yeah. So I suppose in a way, Alan well, King well, has been spotted in Sussex with a watering can. Well, uh, just, it, just guarantees are being made that they'll start good, mm. good to firm in places. They'll have to because there's not a lot of rain forecast through the week, is there? No. I'll tell you what, what, based on that, what I would back is I would back Trushan to win. And I would back Coltrane right. each way on the grounds that. If Trushan didn't run, mm. I would still feel I had a very, very live wire chance of a, of a horse getting in, in the three. Yeah. No Stradivarius, eh? Not from a betting perspective, no. I mean, I'd, no, I'd love to see him win. It'd be a great story, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, it would be a unbelievable story. <laughs> I mean, this, this season just keeps on, throwing yeah. up, like, news line after news line, doesn't it, really? Which order would you have them in, market-wise? Would you have Kiprios? I, mean, I think you'd have to. Yeah, I think. He's the younger horse. He's four years old. I don't think coming back He's to two. I don't think more. coming back to two will harm him. But I don't no. think coming back to two for Stradivarius will no, be No, because he didn't really go two and a half miles. Can I throw a complete outsider into this? Of course. Away well, well, he goes. Yes. Oh. Second in the race last year behind mm. Trushan. He was. He's only run twice over two miles. Second in the race last year behind Trushan, and third behind Subjectivist in Dubai. Uh, beaten, mm. admittedly, by six lengths, but it was by subjectivists who then went on to win the Gold Cup by a country mile. And those, those are the only two runs he's had over the distance. He's had one run so far this season uh, behind Broome at Royal Ascot. Obviously, that was back over a mile and a half. I'd have seen him struggle to, to land a blow there anyway. Mm. He's 50 to 1. Mm. Um, and he travels strongly in a race. That's one thing he does. And I can imagine him getting into the race, not being quite good enough, but might squeeze a place at 50-1 mm. to one mm. in a race where Trushan might not run. Yep. Yes, uh, Well, um, and Coltrane might be coming from a completely different style of race. Exactly, and Stradivarius might not have the legs that he once did. Where's Sean Levy? Doesn't he, norm he normally rides him, doesn't he? Uh, got... Jim's ridden him quite a bit as well. Has he? Yeah. Fair enough. I just can't, I can't knock the principle. Yeah. I, I feel the front of the market is yeah. short enough, and if I got beat by Kiprios at a very short price or Stradivarius, then, then fair enough. Mm. But, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd have Trushan much Like closer. Coltrane's sectionals in winning that Ascot race were, like, phenomenal yeah. as well. They were in keeping with the sprinters and the, the straight mile. So I'd forgotten he'd won the Melrose as well as a yes. young... Yeah. You know, he, he's yeah. a horse who has a, a, a decent body of work in handicaps. He's got more to give, you feel. Yes. And, and people are laughing and saying, oh, he's a, he's a trumped-up handicapper, etc., etc. But, yeah. Um, it's factored look, into the price, isn't it? Should we move on to Wednesday? Yeah. The Sussex Stakes. Yeah, Not shame, isn't it? Not the race that we were hoping it would no. be, because... Caribus sadly has an abscess. Uh, it's been treated, and the plan is that he will run in the Jacques Le uh in the coming weeks. But obviously disappointing for the Sussex because Bayed is now even less of a test against him. Or is it? Am I being unfair to alcohol-free modern games, Chindit, Bathrat, Leon, etc.? No, you're, I don't think you've been a fair to him, to be honest. <laughs> you're asking the wrong person for alcohol free. I have great admiration for alcohol free, but if ever I have a horse that. Got wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Con <laughs> continually, you know, from, from not staying a mile to mm -hmm. then forgetting that then the horse might be a sprinter, but watching Ascot and thinking, nah, just, you know. And it just shows in a way that maybe we spend far too long analysing things, and if you've got a good horse and you run them, they're sound, they give their best. Certainly, trip, I'm enough. If trip in this country is, is a. a term or a, 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 an aspect of a horse's CV that is discussed ad nauseum really, isn't it? Trip and distance. Compared to overseas. Others, like, yeah, overseas, it, they're much happier to try go up, down, up, down. Yeah. Up, down. Oh, there are a couple of guys from Australia who are here, I ask it on the weekend, and they're going, why is not Baid run over a couple of different distances by now? Mm. <laughs> why haven't yeah, tried it? They just don't get it, do they? Yeah, no, but also the, the range of races. I remember when I went to Hong Kong and they had a mile and a half horse that managed to finish 
third in mm. group one over mm. six furlongs. Yeah. I was well, indigenous and like, okay, the pyramid was so small there yeah. that if you were a classy horse, you were good, good enough in those days. What was, but... was a stayer of James Givens that went down under and had, had, won, had he won an Ebor and then went down to contest he got his prep race, he was second over seven or something, or a mile round. It, it, I can't think what it was, Dean. Was it that... Um, Dean McEwen, but not... Hugs Dancer. Hugs Dancer, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, Went down under to contest those staying races yeah. and, and had a little warm-up and finished second yeah. in a group race over seven or a mile. It, yes, I, sometimes you wonder, you, you look at sires and what have you, and you say, oh, they're sprinters on that mm. side. Well, you look at how many actually ever try 10 furlongs yes. or 12 yes. furlongs. It's only if it goes to that small trainer, yeah. you know, cheaply, the strike rates at those distances are often just as good, but of course nobody really tries it because that's not you. You get a sprint. I've always wondered if you just gave somebody a horse, yeah. no pedigree, no anything, and mm. said, "There you go." Yeah. But if you look at the page and it says it's a, you know you get train it like a sprinter, step. you send yeah. it to someone who had the family, so they do. You know, mm -hmm. it's sort of it, nature or nurture. I'm not quite sure which way it, which way it goes. I guess there'll be people who argue both. And yes, that's the yeah. hardest part to be adamant. I think alcohol free is an interesting one in this though. <clears> is that you know she's obviously been. Conv you know, converted into a sprinter from a from a miler, and you know, yes, she was originally born as a sprinter, but but then she's the dual group one miler, winning miler, yeah, you know. uh, yeah, on soft ground, and then goes and wins a you know July Cup on the fastest ground that we've had all summer over six, and travelled beautifully and quick and away from them, good horses. So how do you then? I mean, it'd be a good test of Andrew Balding how a, ho a filly that was too keen early doors, and they were obviously very keen to come back, yeah. now then stretches out. And it's a long straight. That, you know, I know it's a fast mile in some respects at Goodwood, isn't it? You know, you're downhill for large portions of it, etc. Yeah. But that's why it would have been still a long have... straight to t tuck one away, isn't it? That's why we had we had the conversation with Caribus. Then mm. it would have been interesting because it's not stiff. You know, you sort of yeah. Caribus is such a strong traveller mm. that it's not the stiff nature of the Ascot Mile. You do get that little bit of momentum, mm. and I don't know whether that's good or bad for a horse that might struggle to stay the trip. Yeah. For a Caribus's point of view, it probably was quite good because it wasn't as stiff and. But mm. I would just be very disappointed if Baid gets beaten. It's just yeah. a shame that the clashes that Baid is going to need to have to be seen as a top-class horse yeah. are disappearing, aren't they? Yeah, they you are. Know. Well, he won't face Desert Crown in the Judd Long, assuming that he does. No, and would he, will, he in the, you know, will he in the champion as well? I don't know. It's, it, mm. That's the one disappointing aspect of the season. We were talking earlier, weren't we, about mm. the first half of it, third of it, set up lots of great clashes. Baid, Desert Crown, in spiral, homeless songs. Yeah. And one by one, because, of, you know, right. Emily Up John versus Tuesday again would have been interesting. Mm. Westover versus Desert mm. Crown again, if you believed he was unlucky in mm. the derby. And they're just disappearing slightly, which is that, a shame. That's why we need to embrace them when they do present yeah, themselves. Yeah, well, that's true. That's a very exactly. fair point. Uh, Thursday, so we all agreed by it obviously takes all the beating. Yeah. So Thursday's Nassau States. Uh, again, we have another short prize favourite. Uh, Nashua, 4 to 7 with Bet365. Um, and the opposition, just looking through, the, the depth of it, it's. I can't see something that's springing out as a potential uh, serious danger to her, or am I being unfair on the others? No, not really. I mean, my initial reaction is the Oaks is not strong form. She's the only one to have come out of the Oaks and enhanced mm. it in any shape or form is, is Nashua. But if you do want to take on a short-priced favourite, you've got to find what with. And well, isn't Rogue is Millennium a nap? <laughs> to be placed. Absolutely, to be placed. Well, it'll only run if the ground's got enough good in it. Right. I know it's Bet365 are ducking her. Well, her They're only 16. Nothing to do with me. You've been no, on your phone, haven't you? Phone, you? You've been on me. your phone. Hello. <laughs> but I think she will run all right. Mm. Um, yeah, she's, she's probably going to be ridden very cold. Uh, yeah. to try and get into a place because you don't want to... Nicks and bits. Yeah. yeah that's but, an I mean, idea there's nothing you... in the race that mm. you, think, you see you think is a potential threat to Nashua. And again, we're, being well, there'll be trainers, you know, Dream Loper, for example, you know, well, perfectly admirable, yes. Lilac mm. Road, perfectly admirable. But when you say those words, perfectly admirable, what you're really meaning is they're not quite the top sort of, you know, headline act. And Nashua has conveniently sort of chased them all away a little bit. Yeah, and John Goss will be happy that he's going for, you know, a top quality race away from Ascot, won't he? <laughs> It's not been his lucky venue this year, no. particularly. It's not, no. Uh, should we have a quick spin through some of the other races at Goodwood? Um... I will just pass on a message in that day for, in the, the nursery for XJ Rascal, named okay. after you. Um, wow. Just Has just caught the eye a couple of times this year. Though. You rascal. And when? <laughs> and that's on Thursday? That's on Thursday, yeah. It's, that's in the... You're the, passing that on, though, are I'm you? I'm just passing it on. From... A good source. <laughs> Unnamed. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I can't possibly name. Okay. Divulge no, my sources. Not. But one to bear in mind, the nursery. Yeah, I, I, think, I think they've taken it to a couple of tracks in order to try and get a mark. 
okay. in and around the mug that it's got. Uh, Richard, I'm going to open the floor up to both of you. Anything else through the week that you want to mention? Well, let's start with the, the, the good ones, if you see what I mean, um, before we get on to the sort of slightly more sketchy handicaps of Ray. <laughs> the, the one I'd be most looking forward to see, actually, is Free Wind if she runs in the Lily Lane tree. Yeah. Because obviously she was the sort of centrepiece of all that mm -hmm. interference at Haydock, and it must have been some performance to overcome that and win. Um, but she also made a very taking impression at Doncaster when we saw her at the back end of last yes. year. I would imagine they're targeting or building a way towards champions and mayors on um, Champions Day because... She's in the betting for the arc. Yeah, I th they went that way with Journey, and I think they'll get a Group 1 for her first because mm -hmm. obviously it's a, you know, yeah. it's a family that the Strawbridges have. Mm -hmm. But I'm very impressed by her, and I think she's a genuine potential Group 1 yes. filly that's currently not yet running at Group 1 level, and so as Do a result... Do you think she'd be one that would go to France for one of those trials? On, with possibly, a bit of on the possibly. I haven't looked at where they prepared Journey. I remember being slightly surprised that they didn't tilt a little higher with a couple of their mm. horses. I do think it's you know, Group 1 success first, mm. wherever you can get it. Yeah. Um, the May, the May nice. would be a possibility. Yeah. Then they can make a decision. I think, I think 12 furlongs is fine for her. I don't, you know, and she's been obviously campaigned over further. I think yes. she's, mm. she's an interesting horse going forward. Sacred in the Lennox Stakes has always been yes. really highly thought of by... Um, William Haggis and yeah. possibly that six furlongs. We talk about seven furlongs, which that is a really specialist well, issue. Yeah, yeah and and in the Gordon Stakes, um, New London, who got his mm. career back on track. He didn't handle Chester. He got his career back on track in a handicap at Newmarket, which obviously he was entitled to win. It's, it's worth remembering that Godolphin's other potential. Um, Doncaster horses actually have lost a bit of their tackle. Yes. And so as a result, they're not qualified. <laughs> so in actual fact, New mm. London, if you wanted a bet in the ledger, going into that, particularly as Westover is highly unlikely, we think, to now yes. go down that route, then New London anti-post before the Gordon Stakes. And just one wider one, a bit like Sam said, um, Mischief Magic, who runs in the Maiden 445 race at Goodwood, yeah. comes from a really, really strong form race that was won by... Tuesday. Sorry, Tuesday, yes, yes. on yes. Royal Scotsman. Yes. Um, and I think the second, third, fifth have all won one. since. And again for Goodwood, it's the third... In terms of starting prices, it's the third worst track in the country for debutants. So Weatherby and Windsor are the two that beat it. Weatherby is slightly yeah. not big sample size yeah. yet. So, so basically, a lot of debutants are over bet right. with high reputations because mm. it's a very difficult track as a two year old. If you get mm. lost early, you never get mm. back in it. So, as a result, in those maidens, there's nearly always a good percentage of the market that's with some boom two year old. And the better quality ones tend to get. Yeah. So those yeah. were the experience. So mischief magic in the full. Special experience at the track is, is yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Massive, it? it was her debut on that day yeah. at the track. So you've yeah. got. And she both wasn't experience. particularly strong in the market, was no. she? If, if memory serves. No. Sam, have you got a, a few? Outside I, I, just, of the just the, the Gordon Stakes, I think, is a really interesting one. Richard's highlighted there with 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 New London, but I think. The, so the bottom horse, West Wind Blows, I've been quite taken with him. Yeah. He put up a great figure when he won at Nottingham. He beat Return to Dubai pointless yeah. on his comeback. He got lost in the derby a little bit, but then Hamilton last time, uphill and down Dale, he coped with those contours really well. It seems like he's growing up mentally, because yeah. he's been a bit awkward to deal with. Mm. So I think he's a really talented horse. I like Sacred in the Lennox as well. I think yep. she'll have plenty of pace to run at if Pogo te gets taken on by something. Okay. I, thought she, um, I thought she emerged with a lot of credit in the, uh, the Platinum Jubilee. Two, two I wanted to get beat as well, actually. Who are your mouths in the Gordon, isn't it? Is yes. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'd, <laughs> I'd be suspicious, personally. Yeah. I would look... Yeah, that would be one I would be happy to take on. Right. That's the reason I was looking for a bet in the race and, and New London appealed more. And the other one is, is Holloway Boy. Mm. Oh, yes. Um, Same here. Very impressive. I, yes. First time in the, in the Chesham. The Chesham's worked out shocking. And, uh, and mm. given what Carl Burke said after, I thought of going into it, I thought, well, that's really clever. He's, you know, he's got a strong bunch of two-year-olds. and yeah. this is, But it wasn't really, was it? He, yeah. he just... You know, Danny sat on him at a time when everything was going forward and he began yes. to run and he picked them off. I think that's a very, very different kettle of fish this time around. Yeah, agreed. And I don't know what else is in there, but it would be a race I would be looking initially just to think mm, I'd be looking for a bet against because he takes a significant yeah. share of the market. He's still he's probably been priced up as favourite. He, his favourite, sure. yeah. I mean, Mysterious Knight's in that, obviously, 3rd in the July. Staying yeah, and he, on I see you like him, don't you? I like, like him a lot. Yeah. He, he, again, he looked to step forward. <clears throat> and it looked as if, again, he was going to come on for the way yeah. the July stakes was run. He was only picking up late on in that, wasn't he? Still yeah, green and raw, yeah. isn't yeah. he? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, my own main is slight concern with him would only be the track rather than actually, but, but it does big, level out. He's a big he is a, yeah, he looked. He was the nicest looker in that field, for yeah. sure.
I'm going to give you two Go on. To, to have your proverbials on. Um, <laughs> one is benefit in the oak tree stakes. Right. So she ran over six furlongs in Flotus's race at your last time out. I think she's very good amongst her own sex. But that six furlong race, she's a hold up filly. And she was held up at the back, mm. actually held up almost last by John mm. Parhey. Ryan Moore was taking over the ride on Wednesday, stepping up to seven furlongs in the oak tree stakes, as long as there's a decent pace and they don't muddle through the first part of the race. Because she got the same ride at Haydock, didn't she, behind Flotus in that race at Haydock? Yeah, she's and a very she... good filly. Yeah, she's I think very, she's talented. She's a very, very good filly. I don't think we have any idea how good she is just yet. No. Um, and she's about, she's 10 to 1 with Bet365 at the moment for the oak tree stakes. And I think that's a, a cracking each way bet with a bit of luck and uh, clear sailing and a decent pace, obviously. Mm. All the things that you need. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one, I'm going to mention this because I also want to bring Richard's selection in for this. Is the Stewart's Cup on Saturday, assuming that they're all declared and all run. Yep. There's one horse I like, and that's Chill Chill, if she goes to the race. Even though she's rated, I think, 111, and uh, she'll obviously have to carry plenty of weight, but the ratings of winners in the last few years have been mm. quite high. Gifted Master was 111. Uh, Some again, 108. 108 or 107, yeah, one of those. Uh, and 107 for Cardam, I think, was also quite high. So being rated high is not a barrier to success. Yeah, if, if you, it seems the way those handicaps are going anyway. If you go back, I think Who Fit won under yeah, top weight. Top weight. He, he, he was a massive 11. bit, yeah. yeah and yeah. Um, Borderless Scott ran well consistently in the race, so he mm. must have been... Yeah. Quite high. It is a quality contest and for sure. She was, you know, she ran some pretty good races at Group One level last yeah. season. At a big field, strong pace, what, exactly what she needs. Good draw. I, I think she could run a good race, having had a comeback run and blown the cobwebs away. So, mm. um, but you like. We've already mentioned the winner. Yeah, you've, you've oh. got the boy. Oh, some again. Do yeah, again. I do. I, I, I genuinely think. Look, the, the problem with these horses, and Sam will know even more than me, is that you know. When have they actually gone beyond recall, mm. and when are they just need a little bit of relief in the ratings? Yes. yes. He he turned up in Dubai, didn't he? Yes. And as a result, it just never happened for him there. But the great thing is, he dropped chunks. He's that ninety-five, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then there were signs of resurgence last time at, yeah. at Royal yeah. Ascot, and um, I could certainly see I could certainly see him being tipped up in the press mm. on the build-up. So I do think if you like him, I'd back him now. He, he strikes me as an obvious horse do, for, do for tipsters to go to. No one's going to listen to this and back Chill Chill. <laughs> tipped up what? <laughs> That's so dismissive. It's I never man. thought you were like that, Richard. <laughs> I, I can see some again running running well. Let's, let's leave it at that. Hope, <laughs> hope, hope <laughs> I mean, his, his defeat in the Wokingham oh, gosh, yeah. at the hands of that thing of Kevin Ryan's in first time, it still haunts me. Yes. Absolutely haunts yes. me. Yes. Jones, hey, Jonesy or whatever it was yeah. called. Just, oh, God, yeah. Yes, the, well, there's five races to something. say to you. And, uh, I took something on that day. Well, well, not only that, but Chamberlain had said that this thing would... Jay Jonesy would win it. He'd run earlier in the week and got absolutely stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, anything, well, any, anything any, but any that. Any more from, for Goodwood for either I'll, of you? I'll, I'll, I'll stick with Mr Wagyu and the stewards. Okay. Um, we, no, I think we did a stat, didn't we, in June and July. Yes, yeah, so I heard that. that was, that's 15 quite... from 29 yeah. in, for, that's for a sprinter. Absolutely extraordinary stat. So... I'll probably stay with him. Obviously, won the consolation last year. Hopefully, he'll yeah. get a decent. Which side of the track do you? Th I know it's pace, but do you have you seen much evidence that this near side rail is okay this year, or do you still think it's a bit dead? I honestly don't know, Sam. To be honest, because the the issue is that they you don't get those fields right across, no. really. No. And so the bit in the middle, because they tend to migrate to the stand side. A lot of the two-year-old races stalls are stand side nearly mm. always. You have to put in the middle a little bit. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. I mean, I think that that's the one chaos factor thing we should flag up really particularly on the round course isn't it is that traditionally Goodwood does feature lots of hard luck stories yeah. and okay I know jockey ship plays um, an important part in, in where they end up but that does mean Cameco like if you get on the wrong spot in a mm, fancy yes. horse no one is going to let you out and yeah. you know once the cutaways is gone after a first couple of days mm. you're imprisoned on that rail yes. there is no, no way out one horse gets through every now and again but it, and there will have been more watering as well, you would think, in, yeah. than in past years. I mean, well, so I we didn't need much watering the year that we had the monsoon, did oh, we? Oh, goodness, the hair comes when year. There's yeah, that was... There's, there's no rain forecast, is there, of any discernible no. note? And the hard part is, I suppose, in a way, particularly with Trusham being there on, on day one, you'll need to get a lot of water onto that on day one because mm. it's no mean yeah. feat of a track that size to distribute water evenly so, after racing. So the headlines on day two will be... We've only water to get true shunt to run. The ground was too soft for us. It's right here. Yeah. 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 Stradivarius. Well. <laughs> Meeting called off. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Uh, that is just about it. Um, that's been a, a really enjoyable look back at the weekend, a really enjoyable look ahead uh, to what's coming up. Wish you both the best of luck with your selections. Thank you. Um, 
and certainly hope that between the three of us, we've, we've put people onto something positive uh, for the week ahead. Um, so thank you, Sam. Thank you to Richard for joining us on this week's episode of Racing Weekly, brought to you by OddsChecker in association with Bet365. Uh, as always, if you've liked what you've heard or watched in this or any of our previous episodes, uh, then leave us a kind review on Apple Podcasts or in the comments section on YouTube. But for now, from the team here at Racing Weekly, it's bye-bye.